Hi everyone, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Hi Cindy, hi Andrea, are you there? Hello girls, can you hear me? Yes, no? Okay, I'm gonna send a message into the group. Hi Cindy. Hi, how are you? Not so good because I don't see all of you in the classroom. What's going on? Let me check. Ya vamos a ver qué pasa, por qué no entran. Okay, so let's get started. Hi, Andy, how you doing? How are you? I really need to drink water. <laughs> Thanks for being patient. All right, we are officially in class 12. Everyone, thank you so much for being here. Only, only three people, but let's see what we can do with three of us. Let's check. Today we finished section four, all right? Esto ya finalizamos la sección cuatro. Esperando que ya sus compañeros, porque sé que la mayoría de los que están aquí sí ya finalizó la sección cuatro, right? Esperemos que sus compañeros lo hagan. So let's check. We have adverbs of frequency. No tengo la frecuencia aquí de los adverbios, pero de seguro ustedes se la pueden porque la vimos ayer. All right? So let's check. Uh, let's get started with, vamos a iniciar con, okay, uh, Wendy, Wendy Lopez. Hi, Wendy. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Guadalupe. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Bye, a ver, que tenía que despertarlo para que entrara al salón. This, okay, let's get started. So, Wendy, what happened? ¿Le funcionó el micrófono, Wendy López? Okay, sí. Vaya, díganme los adverbios de frecuencia con la frecuencia, por favor. All right, por, con el porcentaje de frecuencia, porque no lo tengo aquí, entonces quiero ver si ustedes ya se lo pueden. Um, always, uh, 100%. Usually, eighty uh, percent. Often, seventy um, percent. Sometimes, fifty percent. Healthy ever, twenty-five percent. Never, zero uh, percent. Wow, Andy, <laughs> great job! Thank you so much. That's marvelous. Yeah, pues sí, ha prestado atención. Excelente, very good. <laughs> Now let's check. Uh, let's see if we have another one. Veamos si hay alguien más que se puede dar los porcentajes, ¿verdad? Let me listen to. Vamos a ver. Guadalupe, let's try. Intentemos, Guadalupe, please. The percentages. Okay. Adverse of frequency. Always uh, 100%. Usually 80, 80, 80, 80%. Often uh, 70%. Sometimes um, 50%. Hardly ever 25%. Never 0%. Bravo. Very good, Guadalupe. Excellent. ¿Por qué, teacher? Porque es importante que sepamos la frecuencia. Si al final y al cabo cuando hablamos decimos de todo. No. When you are sure of what, of what you're talking about, cuando usted está seguro de lo que está hablando, lo habla bien, right? Si yo voy a decir, I hardly ever sleep eight hours, casi nunca o pocas veces duermo ocho horas, right? Yo estoy segura que la mayoría del tiempo, de los siete días de la semana, solo dos días a la semana, duermo ocho horas, right? Por eso utilicé hardly ever. Pero tenemos que tener cuidado, porque sí, con, sí medimos en realidad eh, los porcentajes de, las, de los adverbios de frecuencia. All right. 
So let's check something usual that we saw yesterday. Algo usual que vimos de los adverbios. ¿Cuándo y dónde? No, perdón. ¿Dónde voy a posicionar mi adverbio de frecuencia usualmente? O sea, todos. Todos los adverbios. ¿Cuándo y dónde los voy a posicionar? Más que todo, ¿a dónde? ¿Cuándo? No, porque ya sabemos que lo podemos utilizar en cualquier tiempo gramatical. Pero, ¿a dónde lo voy a posicionar? Veamos. ¿Tengo a alguien? Do I have someone? Ayer mencioné esa theory. Perfect, Cindy. Let me listen to you. Uh, the adverb, adverb of frequency uh, are before the verb and yeah. after the subject. Yeah. But in, the, uh -huh. in uh -huh. the case of sometimes, sometimes it could be uh, before the subject, uh, after the subject and at the end of the sentence but before a coma yes very good marvelous you made my night me hizo la noche sin día excelente que bonito que bonito como lo explico a ver venga a la clase please <laughs> all right let's work with that excellent very good that's true eso es cierto completamente toda la theory que mencionó pero ¿Qué sucede si tengo verb to be? Eso lo mencioné ayer también. Let's check. ¿Quién recuerda? ¿Qué pasa si yo tengo el verb to be? ¿Significa que voy a eliminar el adverb frequency? ¿No lo puedo usar porque tengo verb to be? ¿O qué es lo que voy a hacer con el verb to be? Piensen. Piensen, piensen, piensen. All right. You can put the adverb of frequency uh, after uh, verb to be. That's the placement. Very good. Justamente esta es la posición que va a tomar. All right. Okay, Cindy tiene razón. Todos los adverbs of frequency van a ir después del subject y antes del verbo, ¿verdad? Como dice la estructura. Pero Guadalupe mencionó algo importante. If you have verb to be, your adverb of frequency is going to be after the verb to be, right? Excellent, very good job. We have some teachers over here, excellent. Now, everyone, proud of you. Story wheels have steps. So let's check. We have this guiding example, these guiding structures. Let me listen to Oscar. Can you read the guiding structure, please? Okay. Uh, getting a structure, subject plus adverb of frequency plus verb plus complement. Very good. ¿Y esta estructura es de sentences o de questions, Oscar? Sentences. Perfect. Thank you. Then we have the questions with frequency. Let me listen to Andrea Flores. Please read the structure. Léame la estructura. The, does, plus subject, plus ever, plus verb, plus complement. Plus uh -huh. do. The, do y does. Uh -huh. Plus subject, plus ever, plus verb, plus complement, plus eh, questions. No, question. Question mark. Question mark. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Very good. All right, there you go, everyone. That's great. So, ya repasamos los adverbios de frecuencia. Me dijeron de memoria cuánta frecuencia tiene cada adverbio. Me explicaron la teoría. Me explicaron dónde va posicionado. Qué sucede si tengo verb to be. All right. En serio, los felicito muchísimo porque en realidad nunca me manejan eh, al 100% esta información a los, los estudiantes porque... Son segundo nivel, right? Pero ustedes lo han hecho y lo manejan muy bien. Veamos que también. <laughs> okay, let's check. We have this practice. Tenemos esta práctica. Ya saben que a mis Phoebe le encanta traerles prácticas extras, ¿verdad? Porque it's not enough. Nunca es suficiente para mí. So let's check. Rewrite the complete sentence. Using the adverb in brackets. In its correct position. 
van a reescribir la oración, o completarla, mejor dicho, con el adverbio de frecuencia. All right? Let's work on it, please. Trabajemos en eso, por favor, ahorita.
two more minutes. And don't worry if you don't get to finish all of them. Thank you. No se preocupen si no las logran terminar todos para el tiempo. Okay, so don't worry. All right, let's get started. Number one, let me listen to Alison, Stephanie, please. What you got in number one? Alison, a la one. Vamos a ver si me escribió que no podía estar en la clase. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Sorry, Alison, perdón, me disculpo si me escribió. All right, entonces vamos con Wendy Arevalo. Wendy, tell me, please, what you got for number one? Mm, only, only, only number one. Yes, only number one. He often listens to the radio. 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 Yes, very good. He often listens to the radio. Simple as that. No more. Let's go with... Um, number two, Cindy. They sometimes read a book or sometimes they read a book or they read a book sometimes. Very good, excellent, thank you. The three different ways to express it. And Miguel, number three. Uh, it never gets angry. Exactly. Pete never gets angry. Jancy Deudanes, number four. Tom usually is very friendly. Okay, thank you. Veamos, Guadalupe, what you got for number four? Number four. Yes. Tom, Tom is usually very friendly. Exactly, that's the correct one, justamente. Lo que hablábamos al principio de la clase, ¿verdad? Que si tenemos el yeah. verb to be, la verb frequency va a ir después del verb to be. All right. 
Let's go with the next one. Uh, Andrea Flores. I take... I take sugar in my coffee something. Very good. Perfect. Wendy Lopez, number seven. Ramon and Frank. Ramon and Frank are often hungry. Exactly, are often hungry. Oscar Cruz, my grandmother goes. My, <clears throat> sorry. My grandmother always goes for a walk in the evening. Perfect, thank you. Very good. And let's listen to, vamos a ver quién más está conectado. Okay, um, Christian. Walter helps. O cómo sería? Walter. Teacher, eso no lo he terminado todavía. All right. Pero piense, Cristiano, all right? Vamos a expliquemos esto. El adverbio de frecuencia tiene que ir después del sujeto y antes del verbo. Entonces, ¿cómo diría? ¿Cuál es su sujeto en la oración? Uh, Walter. Exactly. Entonces, ¿cómo diría? Uh, Walter usually helps him his father in the kitchen. That's correct. Thank you. Very good. Correct. Miguel, they watch. They never watch TV in the afternoon. That's correct. Thank you. And the last one is going to be for a uh, Jancy. Veamos Jancy, ¿cómo tienen la última? Christine. Christine never smokes. Smokes. Nunca fuma. Very good. Never smokes. All right, everyone. Congrats. Very good practice. Now, let's move on to the following topic. Okay. Shall we? I'm going to play uh, the video for you on the platform. Just let me share it. Solo déjenme buscar el video, please. Okay, yeah. Vamos a ver. Con estos readings terminamos la sección 4. Ok, let's pay attention to the vocabulary. Hi everyone, in this class you'll read an article about special foods. You will also develop skills in scanning and reading for details. On New Year's Day, many people eat special foods for good luck in the new year. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round. Round foods end and begin again, like ears. It is a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Greeks eat vasilopita, bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find the coin for luck and money in the new year. In Spain, and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the New Year. On New Year's Day in Japan, people eat mochi, rice cakes, for strength in the New Year. Some Americans from southern states eat black-eyed peas and rice with collard greens. The black-eyed peas are like coins, and the greens are like dollars. Okay, now let's go to the platform, and to the platform, to the PowerPoint, and let's practice. Solo que voy a mover esto un poquito. Wait. Okay, there you go. I'm going to move it a bit. Uh -huh. Now you can see it. Okay, so... I'm going to start reading again just to help you with the pronunciation and then you go along. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round. Round foods end and begin again. Like years. Right? Son infinitas, según ellos. Por eso son redondas, porque terminan y comienzan, terminan y comienzan, right? 
So they have a cycle. No que sean infinitas. Tienen un ciclo, right? They have a cycle. So let's check. It is a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Greeks eat basilopita bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find a coin for luck and money in the new year. So let's start with Guadalupe, please. Chinese people. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round, round foods and, and begin again, like years. Very good. Vieron esa, esa fluidez en la que Guadalupe dijo, and, and, right? Porque no nos, no nos tenemos que fijar o detener mucho en el hecho de que ambas tienen casi la misma pronunciación. Porque si ustedes lo hacen, se van a confundir. And, and, right? It's almost the same pronunciation. So let's go with Jewish custom. Let me listen to Andrea Flores. Jewish custom. It is a Jewish custom to eat to eat apple apples with honey for a sweet New Year. Perfect. Thank you, Miguel. Greeks. Greeks eat. Basilopita bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find the coin, the coin for luck and money in the new year. Perfect, thank you. Now let's go with Wendy Arevalo. Chinese people again, please. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round, round foods and end begin again like years. Perfect, thank you, good fluency. Let's listen to Christian Giovanni, Jewish custom. Uh, it is a Jewish custom to eat apples with, more, with honey for a sweet new year. Perfect, let's go with uh, Cindy. Greeks. Greeks eat basilopita bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find a coin for luck and money in the new year. Perfect, thank you. Now let's go with the next one. In Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's. Perdón, on New Year's Eve. Eso va unido, New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the new year. Esa es una costumbre también que se hace aquí en 31 de diciembre, right? Creo que la gente lo celebra y se comen 12 uvas a las 12 de la noche. All right? I think that's what they do. Creo que eso es lo que hacen aquí también. I've seen it. So let's check the same as in Mexico. Lo mismo que en México, right? Let's go to the second paragraph. On New Year's Day... In Japan, people eat mochi, rice cakes, for strength in the new year. Para la fortaleza o fuerza en el año nuevo. Some Americans from southern states eat black eyed peas and rice with colored greens. The black eyed peas are like coins and the greens are like dollars. Let's listen to Oscar Otoniel, Spain, please. In Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the new year. Thank you. Jansi de Odanes, eh, Japan. Um, on New, Year, New Year's Day in Japan, people eat much cheap rice cake for a strange in the New Year. Perfect, thank you. And Wendy Lopez, Americans from Southern. Some Americans from Southern states eat black eyed peas and rice with color greens. The black eyed peas are like coin and the greens are like dollars. Very good, thank you, all right? 
I don't think I'm missing anyone. No creo que me haga falta alguien más. All right, the practice. Porque tengo entendido que Víctor ahorita se ha parado. Y Pedro creo que no ha llegado a su casa todavía. All right, Alison no puede. Y Walter tampoco puede. So, that's it. Let's move on. We still have this. Rewrite the sentences in the correct order. Seguimos practicando con... Eh, ah, ya vino... Víctor, ok. Ayúdenos con la lectura, Víctor, para que pueda practicar, right? Eh, usted va a leer Americans from Southern States. Son American from Southern States eat black eyed peas and rice with color greens. The black eyed peas are like coins in the greenest like dollars. Very good. Thank you. All right. Now, let's go with the practice. Nos vamos a la práctica, right? Para que no se nos olvide cómo utilizar los adverbs of frequency, estas oraciones ya tienen todo lo que necesitan, solo que están en desorden. Let's reorder, all right?
Okay, how many of you have finished already? Okay, Victor, excellent. Cindy, Guadalupe, great, Miguel. Okay, let's get started then. Let's start with Victor, number one, what you got? Tom usually reads the newspaper in the morning. Exactly, simple as that. Guadalupe, number two. He is frequently late for the class. Very good. Andrea, number three. Your microphone, Andrea. Okay, maybe we don't have Andrea. Okay, let's go with um, Cindy, number three. They are always happy. Exactly, they are always happy. Miguel, number four. Temía que me dijera a mí, pero está bien. <laughs> y le dije la más difícil. <laughs> sí, ya me delaté con la pronunciación. <laughs> does her mother, uh, does her mother often help? Ah, oh, no, espérenme. Ay, es que es este... Ahí no tiene part to be, así que... No, sí. Es, does, uh, does she, does she often help her mother? Yes, perfect, thank you. Does she often helps her mother? Very good. Help, okay. perdón, porque no necesita la S, right? Thank you. Oscar, number five. Your microphone, Oscar. Hi, hello, we don't have Oscar. Okay, let's go to the next one. Wendy Arevalo, number five. And Anna is generally in bed by 11.30. Exactly, thank you. With this one, you have learned another one, right? Generally. Right. ¿A cuál se parecería generally? ¿En qué nivel colocarían ustedes generally? In usually. All right. Yeah, it could work. All right. Very good. So let's go with the next one in number six. Jansi, mm -hmm. let me listen to you. Molly occasionally visit the museum. Exactly, thank you. In which level could we add occasionally? In qué nivel podríamos adherir occasionally? No puede ser donde está generally ni usually. Hardly ever. Mm -hmm. Exactly, very good. Every now and then, all right? Ahí de vez en cuando, ocasionalmente. Very good, thank you, Cindy. And the last one that goes for, that goes to Christian, Giovanni. Uh, you study really for the exam. Rarely. The exam. Rarely. Mm -hmm. You, repita de nuevo, ¿cómo la tiene? Uh, you study really for the exam. Mm, recuerde que los adverbios de frecuencia van después del sujeto. Okay. Entonces sería you. You rarely study for the exam. Exactly. You rarely study for the exam. Right? Y rarely entra en la categoría de hardly ever también. Right? Perfect, my dear students. Excellent. Gorgeous. Let's move on to the next one. Sports seasons in the U.S. Creo que... Ya con esto, bueno, literalmente con esta práctica, esta práctica no estaba en la plataforma, right? Esa la traje extra, pero en realidad con esto terminamos la plataforma. Así que pregunto, ¿quiénes ya finalizaron la sección 4 completamente? Por favor, levanten la mano virtual. 
Right. Tenemos bastante, Miguel, Oscar, Víctor, eh, Guadalupe, Cindy, and Walter. Excellent, All right? Recuerden, los que no lo han finalizado tienen que hacerlo ahora más tardar. Si no, para las personas de la década de Insofar, para ellos cuenta como que ustedes no están trabajando. All right? Entonces, tenemos que hacerlo. Let's do it. It's not that difficult. So, let's check sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. Como vamos a pasar a la sección 5 ya, voy a compartir con ustedes el video. Video, video, video. Let's listen to it. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary related to popular sports in the U.S. and Canada. Let's get started by listening and practicing the vocabulary. Sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. In the spring, people play golf and play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, and go swimming. In the fall, people play football go bike riding, and go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, and go skiing. Now it's your time to put this vocabulary into practice. I would like for you to describe the sports that you play in different seasons. For example, in the spring, I play soccer. In the summer, I go swimming. In the fall, I play When Okay, let's move on to the power. I just want to point out something. Me gustaría indicarles algo. No decimos winner aquí. Winner es ganador. Aquí se tiene que decir winter. All right? Lo que hacemos es que enrollamos más la lengua para sonar un poco más fresa, ¿verdad? Pero no es que va a cambiar. Decimos winter. Winter. No me vayan a decir winner porque en realidad me están diciendo ganador ahí. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. So let's check. It's for season in the U.S. and Canada. Recuerden, si no tiene la A, no es USA. Right? Ya me pasó en un curso anterior, antes de, de entrar aquí a esta clase con ustedes, que me decían USA, USA. Y es U.S. All right? Solo es United States. No tiene América ahí. Solo es United States. Si les apareciera la A, sí sería United States of America, pero... Ya usualmente eso no se utiliza. So let's go. Um, in the spring, in the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play football, perdón, play volleyball, go swimming. In the fall, people play football, go back riding, go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, and go skiing. Things to point out. Cosas que hay que diferenciar. Cuando decimos hiking, es cuando van, lo que llamamos aquí quizás, eh, uh, es escalar. Sí, escalar, right? Pero cuando llevamos usualmente un palito, de hecho, ese palito se compra, no es que usted lo agarra de un árbol, ¿verdad? All right, and you, you are going hiking to the mountain, right? Y vamos hiking, haciendo hiking en la montaña con el palito, caminando, right? Pero subiendo. Mientras que el, el skin, el skin es cuando usted usualmente esquía, pero con las dos varitas que se ponen y va hacia abajo, right? Esquiar, literalmente es esquiar. Y ice skating es patinar. Patinaje en hielo. Right? It's different. All of them are pretty different. 
todos son bastante diferentes. ¿Ok? Lo mismo funciona para soccer. Para nosotros, fútbol y fútbol, ya eso es todo. Pero para ellos, soccer es fútbol. Y fútbol, en realidad, es, um, es fútbol, pero americano, ¿verdad? O sea, utiliza otro tipo de varones, otra estrategia, otro tipo de balón, y son otras estrategias. All right? So, that's just FYI for your information, right? Para que tengan en consideración. So, let's go with the vocabulary. Let's start with Oscar. Otoniel, tell me the vocabulary of the spring, summer, fall, and winter. Okay. In the spring, people play golf and play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, and go swimming. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, go skiing. Right, excellent, thank you. Let's listen to Victor, please. Victor Ramos, your turn, action. In the fall, people play football, go by grading, go hiking. All right, ese es el que le hizo falta a Oscar, pero usted tiene que iniciar, all right? Desde spring, summer, Okay. Fall. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, go skiing. Perfect, thank you. Let's go with Guadalupe, please. And after Guadalupe, Miguel. Sports season in the US and Canada. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the fall, people play football, go bike riding, go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, go skiing. Perfect, thank you. Action me. Sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, in, this, in the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go And in the fall, people play football, go bike riding, and go hiking. And in the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, and go skiing. Perfect. Thank you. Let's go with Jansi uh, de Odanis, please. After Jansi, Andrea Flores. Sport season in the US, U.S. and Canada. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the fall, people play football, go by reading, go hiking. Okay, repita, go bike riding. Go, go bike riding. Go hiking. Go hiking. Mm -hmm. In the summer, people play baseball, baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, Go ice ski, skating, go skiing. Perfect, thank you. Let's go. Vaya, ya vi que Andrea se paró. Vamos con Cindy, entonces. Action, Cindy. Sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the fall, People play football, go bike riding, go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, go ski. Perfect, thank you. Solo quiero eh, highlight something, all right? Quiero resaltar algo. Tenemos que decir por obligación, go bike riding. Si ustedes me dicen, go bike reading, me están diciendo, Ir en bicicleta leyendo. Right? 
and makes no sense y no tiene sentido, right? Eh, reading y writing es distinto, okay? So you gotta be careful with that. Let's go with Andrea. Okay. A sport season in the USA and in Canada. No, 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 in... Andy. Andy, ahí no tiene A. Solo es US. US. Uh -huh. And Canada. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the fall, people play, play football, go bike, Reading. Writing. 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 Okay. Go hiking. Hiking. In the, hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice taking, go skiing. Perfect. Thank you. Let's go with Wendy Lopez. Please, action. Sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. In the spring, people play golf, play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, uh, play tennis, play volleyball, go swimming. In the fall, people play football, go bike riding, go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, go skiing. Perfect, thank you. Now, let's check this up, everyone. We got this vocabulary, so let's see. Los puse a repetirlo a todos porque quería que se trataran de aprender dónde iban cada, una de los, cada uno de los sports que se juegan, ¿ok? ¿En qué, en qué season? So, let's check. So, tell me, eh, esta es la, la slide del, de las oraciones que hicieron, no es que eso van a hacer ahorita, ¿ok? Solo le he puesto ahí. So tell me, Oscar, in qué season, in which season do we have a go swimming? Go swimming in the summer. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Miguel, in which season do we have go bike riding? Back riding mm. Mm. en otoño, teacher, pero se me olvidó ahorita. A fall. Fall, oh, okay. Yes, very good, thank, thank you. you. Eh, Guadalupe, when do we practice ice skating? In the winter. Yes, perfect. And Victor, when do we practice playing golf? The uh, primavera era <laughs> spring, right? Victor is a spring, okay? Don't forget about it, that's the purpose of it. And bueno, más o menos les pregunté a los que tenían la cámara abierta, algunos, right? Viendo que no fueran a ver la respuesta. <laughs> so let's check everyone. Let's move on. Guiding examples. Teacher, Let me listen to. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. También se puede decir autumn. 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 Yes. Yes. Es que autumn. sí me lo había aprendido y aquí vine a aprender. <laughs> ah, así no me gusta, diga. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's another one. That, that is, nice. It's something good. new. Yeah, something thanks. new, something good. Okay, that's right. Let's listen to um, Christian, number one and number two, please. Uh, in the spring, uh, Mary plays soccer. In the summer, my parents go swimming. Perfect. Wendy Lopez, three and four. In the fall, Matias goes bike riding. In the winter, I play basketball. Perfect, thank you. Now, recuerden que en la plataforma tienen que escribir sus ejemplos, así que por eso les he brindado estos, right? 
estamos utilizando pretty much the same structure as usual. La misma estructura que hemos utilizado desde el principio, ¿ok? My dear students, it was a pleasure to be with you. Ha sido un placer estar con ustedes. So I hope to see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye. Take care. See you Bye. later. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good, good night. Weekend. Have a good night.